Oh boy, was I really struggling to decide if I should do this one, but you know what? We got to keep the content train rolling. Hashtag content forever. We're doing Batgirl on this show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Batmanning Of. This is the show where I take every other character in the DC universe, and eventually we will get to Batman and do another Batman movie. But the thing is, we're making the Batman movie for the other characters of the DC universe. And today's episode could ring a little controversial because we are going to be talking about Batgirl, Barbara Gordon. The most prominent character in the Bat family of female origin. Would you agree with that? If, if you don't classify Batwoman or Catwoman as being somebody in the Bat family, Barbara is like the female representation of all that could be. Is she people's favorite? Yeah. I know there's loyalists for Cassandra and Stephanie, but Babs is cool. She's great. You can't see it in the background behind me, but I have a lot of stuff on here for Batgirl because I am just a fan of that character. I've always been a Barbara Gordon fan. There's just something so obvious about her necessity to the Bat family where you're like, oh yeah, of course there should be the Bat Girl. Just like the interpretation of that character for the female skewed audience. And I understand how some people don't enjoy that. They're like, oh, it's so not necessary. It's not nece necessary, but it's like, yes, it is. She's important. She's cool. You want women to read comics. You have to do that kind of character. And the fact that Babs has been able to grow into one of the most important members of the DC universe into a larger faction of audience members, just like, look at all these different interpretations of the character that can pretty much fit into any skew. That's something that's really impressive that not a lot of these other characters get to do. Like Nightwing has to be a certain way. Red Hood's going to be a certain way. But Batgirl, you want to make a coming of age story? go ahead. You want to make a little bit more of a comedy and a romantic tendency? Go ahead. Straight up action? Go ahead. A political thriller? Go ahead. You can do all of that with Babs and then more. And the fact that she's just so connected to the larger mythos of the DC universe, that doesn't hurt either. She is intrinsically connected to Jim Gordon. She's intrinsically connected to Batman. And honestly, it's kind of sucks, but her most iconic story does connect her to one of the greatest villains of the DC universe, the Joker. And that could be the greatest downfall of Barbara as a character, that her most iconic story is her demise and her trauma-induced experience being connected to Batman and the Joker. That is a big problem for a character, but you notice when a writer and a team of creators are very much interested in telling a good Barbara Gordon story, they do not focus on the killing joke. They're like, if it happened, who cares? If it didn't, it doesn't matter. There is so much more we can do with this character that have her be connected to this traumatic experience. A good writer can move forward. A bad one will dwell on it too long. I'm not going to say anything about any particular writers, but I'm just going to point that out there. The other impressive thing about Barbara Gordon, and this is something that is so rare for a comic book character to actually do, is take on a, a dual identity of two hero and two characters in their own right. She is Batgirl to an entire generation, but to another group and another demographic, she is Oracle. She is one of the smartest, most capable women behind the scenes of the DC universe. And how often, how often do you get to see a female character have that presence where it's like she is essentially like the person behind the scenes doing all the computer work for the Bat family, even to the larger DC universe sometimes, and still getting to be an actual character where she goes out and fights crime in a suit. And yes, yeah, sometimes you can have her do one thing more than the other, but the fact that in her entire runtime as a character, she has been able to do both of them and competently and have that be her defining trait where she could still do both, that is unbelievable. And something we don't get to see a lot of. And that is really cool and just makes her a little more unique because you can do what you want with Barbara and make it work. Sometimes you get bogged down by the certain areas of her life where there's trauma, but other times we can tell a compelling story and move forward and let her grow and experience the world in great ways. She is always smiling, always happy. She knows how to be rough when she needs to. Kind of chameleon-y in that way where she can do anything, but more often than not, she is just a young woman who is confident and capable and willing to go the extra mile to do things a certain way, and that's pretty cool to see. And you know, I, I kind of talk about my personal connection to these characters when we do this. 
Barbara, I would argue, is my favorite member of the extended Bat family. I have a soft spot for Dick Grayson. I just think that character is cool. And it's just their relationship I really like to see because they are essentially the characters we get to grow up with. They start off younger. They become the more matured and experienced members of their respective family. And that's just a cool thing to see because you actually get to grow up with these characters and see them flesh out. And Barbara's a great example of that, starting as the young girl who's like, I can do this having the world knock her down, adjusting to the world knocking her down, and growing up again to become the woman she is today, it's pretty cool. It's something we don't get to experience a lot in some of these stories, so I do love to see that, and I think it makes for something very special. Batgirl's just cool, and Babs is the perfect example of how to take a dumb idea where it's like, we need more girls watching this show, what if we just took the character and made them a girl, and allow her to grow into something special? And that's really cool. And the thing with that is there have been a couple representations of this character in live action. I do like to talk on those a little bit. The thing is, they're not all great. And some aren't even going to see the light of day. So it starts with Yvonne Craig, who is the conception of this character. She starts in the 66 Batman show, moves over to comics. It's an okay idea. It's very much just like we need the other sidekick. That's the girl. It happens, we can move past it. It's not great, but I understand it's necessity. And then Alicia Silverstone plays in Batman and Robin, and you're like, ooh, this is not a real character, and, and that's a shame. And then there's just, you know, varying ideas, maybe Oracle's in the Birds of Prey show, maybe you could say Felicity has some Oracle natures in the Arrow show. Not much going on if the Batgirl character in that aspect. But then you get the big controversy that kind of inspired me to do the episode. That is Leslie Grace's portrayal of Babs that will never see the light of day. Now the thing is, there's two ways I could have done this video. I could have been like, let's just talk about the movie that couldn't exist with like, you know, Brendan Fraser, Leslie Grace, these amazing people doing talented work. Or it's like... I don't want to really like touch that. I think that could have been a fun movie to see how it could grow and do stuff cool. You just see Leslie looks like she would have been fantastic. The way she's interacting with fans off screen and she's in the costume talking to young people. I think that's really cool. The talent behind the scenes seems very interesting. Like the people are genuinely interested in Batgirl in the comic book universe. That's really exciting. But we'll never actually fully see what she was capable of. So I don't want to dwell on it too long. I just think there is the potential she could have been better than Yvonne and Alicia. And you're like, that is probably not a hard, you know, hill to climb. But it's just something to note that Batgirl's a character who never really gets to stand out in her comics or in her shows, I should say. She just always is the sidekick. So we're doing an actual movie and that's the one that's canceled. That kind of sucks. But it's just important to note, we've never really had a good one, have we? So let's talk about it. How do you do a Batgirl movie? Well, here's my idea for you. I grew up, it's so weird to say grew up because it wasn't even that long ago, doing the Batgirl of Burnside storyline. That is when I kind of got into the character when that was coming out. I was like, oh, this is interesting. I want to check it out. Just kind of like revamping Barbara. So my actual narrative for a Batgirl film is loosely based on that. It's a more mature woman being like, oh, well, I want to kind of like grow to be my own person. So I want to stay close to my family and my dad, and I just kind of want to do that going over here to this part of things. So she's still in Gotham, but she's in the Burnside part of Gotham, and she's like, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to live on my own, maybe I'll make some new friends, I'm just going to try to do things for myself and grow up independently of this thing that I've always been connected to. I grew up around Batman and Robins and the Commissioner, now I want to try to take what I've learned there and do it for myself over here. I'm going to be my own woman, doing my own thing adjacent to the people that I know. Doing this, she is also moonlighting as Oracle. I want to have both dualities in here because I think they are both equal representations of the Barbara Gordon character. She can run around doing the Batgirl thing, but if somebody calls her and it's like, hey, it's Black Canary, hey, it's the Huntress, could you help me hack into this thing or do this stuff? She is doing Oracle on the side. It's important to have both sides of that because Barbara is smart. She is technically inclined. She knows how to do those things and is capable of doing them, but she can still go around and punch a person. So I want to experience both sides of that. Now, when you're doing that, you got to find the right villain. I wanted to go with somebody that is not connected to the Batman mythos at large. No, I don't want to throw like, he was a black mask or a penguin. So I went with the character of Velvet Tiger, who is arguably a character I don't know a lot about. But let's just set up like maybe there's a professor at her college or her university who is moonlighting 
as Velvet Tiger. And then you're just like, oh, so maybe she's taking this girl's class, learning a little bit from Velvet Tiger as the professor. And she's just seeing like, oh, you are actually doing something nefarious behind the scenes. Well, I'm trying to stop you in that way, but I'm also in your class where you're teaching. And you just have her trying to like figure out how to balance like becoming your own independent woman and doing your own thing. Now, when I talked about things like the Batmaning of, and they're like the Batman movies, Chinatown, you know, it's those old detectives. I want this film to kind of play like a Legally Blonde where it's like, what is this bubbly, happy, interesting girl doing in this part of the city growing up on her own, striking out to be independent? I want it to feel like this is lighthearted. It's fun loving. She's having a good time, but still going through a lot that could be hard to explain. You just mix it all together, a coming of age story with a girl who's you know, a fish out of water, essentially in a place that doesn't really want her while she's doing all these technical stuff for superheroes behind the scenes while being her own superhero on her own time, fighting a woman who could potentially be her professor at college. That is the Batgirl movie. And when you are doing something like that, you've got to find the right people behind the scenes to make it. So my director for my Batgirl film is a woman who worked on episodes of The Sandman and episodes of Paper Girls. And her name is Marzi Almos. And I am impressed of some of the work I've seen her do recently. I'm not too in depth on like her other filmography. But there is a clear understanding of genre picture in there that I think is very important when you are doing a film like this. And you could easily adapt to that kind of like intense comedy of the paper girls and put it into a Batgirl story. How do we cast for our Barbara Gordon? Now, part of me was like, do I just get Leslie Grace to come back? I, I thought maybe, but I also wanted to be like a fresh mind about us and not just have to dwell on what that other movie could have been. So my choice for Barbara Gordon is Ella Hunt, who is one of the stars of one of my favorite TV shows, Dickinson. She was phenomenal in that. She has the right look of just like this capable woman who can stand on her own and say her own mind and still just like a little young in the face to make you go, oh yeah, she's still inexperienced in some things, but she's very capable. So Ella Hunt, that is my Batgirl. And that is my pitch for the Batmaning of Batgirl. It's a weird one, but hey, Batgirl's cool. This is a great way to get into that character. So that is going to do it for this episode. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.